Any company that has doubled in size in the last five years, given the turbulent nature of the economy in that time, must have a business strategy worth taking note of. Linotex manufactures a premium natural rubber called Linotex Premium Rubber that's used in the mining, mineral processing and aggregate industries. As this diagram shows, Linotex rubber has a long molecular chain length, very similar to the molecular chain length of natural raw rubber. This is in contrast to the much shorter molecular chain length of conventional rubber. It means Linotex rubber is tougher and more resilient, vital in slurry applications. We take a natural rubber from the tree um, and unlike most rubber producers, we don't add a lot of energy to it, so we maintain its natural properties as best as possible um, and we have a, what we call a, a low energy, low shear process um, and that maintains um, the basic properties of, of the natural rubber throughout and gives us uh, a very high wearing rubber um, that has uh, very good abrasion resistance. Despite the flagging economy in recent years, with clients increasingly looking for more cost-effective solutions, Linotex has never been tempted to produce a cheaper, more commercial rubber. As Linotex, we feel we want to keep the premium grade of rubber and not take the value away from that by competing against the cheaper rubbers where we feel we would be equal but wouldn't give that differential. A client can pay the, as it were, the higher price for the, for the raw material uh, and get better life out of it that gives him better economics versus competitive products. And uh, we've seen that time and again where, you know, the Linotex rubber may be more expensive than the competitive products. If the wear life is, is 30 to 40, even two times greater, um, the benefits speak for themselves. The Linotex story began in Malaysia in 1923. The company was founded by a British inventor, Bernard Wilkinson. The unique properties of his rubber won him a contract from the Ministry of Defence to line the fuel tanks of RAF fighter planes with his rubber. If a fuel tank was penetrated by a bullet, Wilkinson's rubber would close over the hole and prevent fuel escaping from the tank. But as successful as the company was throughout the 20th century, it wasn't until its acquisition in 2005 by Narvis Capital that Linotex could really begin to reach its potential. We'd probably had for a number of years uh, the luxury of uh, satisfying the levels of business that we that we really needed to um, from the industry that we knew that we knew well. Um, but in times when the industry that you that you've tended to rely upon isn't doing so well, then really diversification is is a necessary thing to do. That core industry is mineral processing, and as it began to wane in the UK, so new markets began to emerge here and overseas. Thanks to Narvis's investment, Linotex was equipped to take advantage of them, and in the UK particularly, that meant the sand and gravel industries. We're looking for environments where the properties of Linotex rubber work best, and we're looking for abrasive environments, and mining is an abrasive environment, and sand and gravel has many of, of, of the same requirements. Then in some of the developing parts of the world, construction is growing significantly, and so it's, it's, it's a big growth market. Whether it's for the sand and gravel industries in the UK or for mineral processing overseas, Linotex also manufactures component parts that it can then line with its own premium rubber. One benefit of moving into new industries is that it gives Linotex the opportunity to develop new process equipment. The rubber is in itself a world-beating product and it lends itself very well to, uh, to being combined with our range of process equipment items such as pumps, cyclones, dewatering and sizing screens and so on. So uh, yes, it does make us a one-stop shop um, and a one-stop shop that the customers come to and, and, and can rely upon. Today, Linotex has a presence on almost every continent around the world. Its major manufacturing site is in Malaysia, where it's been for over 50 years. One of its fastest growing markets is China, where the mineral processing industry is still vibrant. Linotex has opened a factory in Wuxi to exploit these new opportunities. But the company soon recognized the value of expanding its Wuxi factory, so it could start manufacturing for clients in other territories. We've been making products uh, around the world 
um, that have turned out to be very similar to one another. And so we've really looked and, and evaluated what, what we do and then really rationalized some of the manufacturing base and said, well, you know, we have a location in the Far East that is actually low cost um, and would be a better place to make uh, some of the products. So hoses, for instance, could be made in the Far East and then shipped to um, the regional centers around the world. The growth of Lanotex in the last five years proved that with the right investment, a carefully targeted sales approach, and above all, a premium product to sell, companies can still find success in even the harshest economic climate.